Hello, everybody. Uh, let's see if we can get our deck up. There we go. Good. Thank you so much for coming here and uh, giving us a chance to tell you what we're doing with video and blockchain and how we are using that to understand people and what they feel and how to read emotions. So Jarvis is a platform built by us. Um, it is the world's first opinion, video opinion search engine. As you know, you know, if you could read the jumbled text, video is everywhere right now. 80% of, almost 80% of all internet traffic right now is video. People are consuming or people are producing more videos in 30 days than what television had created in the last 30 years. Over 300 billion hours. If you can hear, hello? But um, to just to give you an example of what people are doing in video, within 30 days of Apple iPhone being released, there were 17 million people went online and expressed what they think about the phone, what they think about the missing home button, what they think about the camera, the size, so on and so forth, in 400 million hours. One product, one month. This is similar to what has happened in the late 1996, if you remember. People are creating lots of web pages, left, right, and center. Right? Everybody had a .com on their name. Like, who, when did we last do that? We, we don't remember. But today, people are creating more videos than what they used to do in the late .com areas. But there is a difference. In video, you can express things that you could never do in, in textual formats. You can express your emotions. You could express why you feel a certain way. For example, if you uh, had said in a text format in any of the medium that are available today that you like this conference, COGX. So, at the end of the day, all the technology that exists today will be able to tell you how many people say they like COGX, right? That will not tell you any reason of why you like it. You could say you like it because of this speech, but <laughs> you cannot, um, that does not get captured in textual format. So text so far um, has been extremely effective into connecting you to exact words that you're looking for. But if you are really looking for human understanding, human why, that world has never been cracked before, especially using technology. Because that is not understanding words, it's understanding emotions, understanding the science of why you have that. This, again, is very similar to what uh, in late 1996 of the war time, um, Google faced a challenge like that, where people were creating words, uh, sorry, uh, sites, and those sites were undiscoverable. They were all over the web, and uh, you only way you could understand or you could figure out there is a site is somebody told you. So then Google came up with a great idea of really looking inside those pages and broke those pages into keywords. So if they did a beautiful thing called page rank, where now if you search for a, for a word, they know how the pages in the world are, are ranked on that word. It's called page rank, right? Very similar is thing is happening today in video. Where video, people are expressing how they feel about certain things, not in just in any, you know, following any rules. They are doing it in different sections of those videos. They are saying, you know, some garbage in the first, you know, two minutes, and then they are saying something really meaningful from two minutes to, let's say, four minutes, and then there is a garbage again. Again, similar to how early days web pages were. But video is very difficult to do that because, A, you have to understand a combination of computer vision to voice modulation, and you have to understand what those words mean. So you could take out different sections of those videos. 
That is the difficult part of it. So uh, Forrester Research came up with this brilliant uh, word that I use it everywhere. They said, one minute of video is about 1.8 million words of text. Now Forrester probably, I don't know why it's not 2 million, uh, don't ask me. <laughs> but uh, what they're really trying to tell you is actually not the words. What they're really trying to tell you is video captures things that words cannot. It captures, let's say, gestures. It captures emphatics. For example, if you say, I like it with a slap on the table, that actually says very different than when you say the same thing with a shrug, which means you don't like it. That's what they are trying to say. People are expressing their emotions and clues for what they feel in video all over today. And they are now uh, consuming that video more and more and more. So that world of really understanding people is what qualitative research, market research comes into play. So today, even companies like Apple, if they wanted to understand what do people feel about their new iPhone, what they will do is they will do a focus group study, right? They will put 20 people in a room and they will ask them, what do you think about this phone? And they will ask, they will use a human technology, an interpreter, to analyze and transcribe everything they have said in that room. 20 people to really analyze what a product like iPhone X, what people feel about it. See the, see the dilemma here. Why do you need 20 people in a room when you have 17 million people who already told you what they, how they feel about it? But the challenge is, it is a black box. So we started with that concept. Can we use technology to understand people? Can we use technology to understand opinion? And we then started they take a deeper dive into it. What does that mean? What does an opinion mean? It's a complex problem if you just start with an open-ended question. To give you another example of it, people's opinion on different things matter differently. So if I ask you, what do you think about a, a car? Let's, let's be creative here. Let's say, what do you think about Aston Martin? So, you know, you'll see, what's your answer, what do you give? You will say, you know, I like the car interior, I like how fast it goes in the zero to 60, I like um, how their wheels are interesting. So, you see, you're describing attributes of that opinion. You're never going to say, I like it. Basically, that means you don't want to talk about it. But if you do answer, what do you think about Aston Martin, you will answer on different attributes. What do you think about the car's wheel? How do you like the interiors? How do you like the zero to 60? All so on and so forth. So to understand opinion, you really have to understand the um, different attributes of their opinion and how they relate to the car in this example. And you have to understand the weightage of people's opinion into different of those attributes so we can relate back to it. So we uh, took a stance very early on that opinion is, is an interesting thing that you cannot be subjective about. Then it breaks the mold. If I say, we think you, this is your opinion, then we are then we invariably going to get it wrong. It needs to be machine-driven, objective. We cannot be subjective about things like opinion. We have to be objective about the opinion. Now what that means is we have to use complex technology and machine to understand the correlations between different data points. So what we have built a, a platform that does that to start with. This is similar to, again, how Google did it in breaking down pages. We do that to break down videos. We take a video and we use, again, the combination of 
the texts that are written in there, we transcribe, translate those. We run through an NLP engine. And then we use a combination of um, computer vision and your voice modulation. So to understand the different subjects you may be talking about in the video itself. Idea of that one is, since we are trying to understand people and their opinion, by saying they like something is not interesting enough. We have to measure the depth. So we can create clues. We can create insights about why they have that opinion. So that's a neural network. A neural network for all the people here, we're all talking about AI and machine learning, you know, no neural network can ever work on without having a structure. So we created a structure of something inherently a little difficult to do. And we used, we, we have come up with this thing called the true field score. Idea is you take an opinion and you, and you understand the attributes of an opinion tree and you use the machine to now calculate the true field score. So your neural network can then be trained on it and it can answer the questions of why you have that opinion. We take all of those things and put it in an opinion index of video. Think about the analogy of that one is a, is a Google search index. We have a similar thing in an opinion index in video where we can then train, we can build products on top of that. Just like Google has products on top of search index, like Google AdWords, Google AdSense, so on and so forth, we have products that is built on top of the opinion index. The first product is very obvious one that you can understand is the insights uh, um, product. The insights product actually answers what, again, historically companies or brands been using focus group study to do. So this answers what a 20 people in a room might have, might have given clues about, but we use literally millions of people's opinion Instead of using a human interpreter, we use a neural network to give you clues about why people have that opinion, the insights of that. The second part of, of, of our product, or second product, is we have automated the, um, a video Q&A part of what uh, sites kind of insert onto their page. So it is like, imagine a, a, a site is selling the Apple iPhone X. We, are, we insert this widget onto their page that answers different things that people may have questions about, but using automation and machine, other than human. But then it, it, the, we came to this really big understanding of what we are dealing with. We are dealing with really, really sensitive data. We are dealing with people's opinion, understanding people. You know, um, I was in Yahoo from the very, very early days, and many, many of you have. Um, as you know, many people, many companies in the world have created profiles. And those profiles, you as a consumer, we have the right to kind of see what the profile is. But the, the profiles are not your property. The prof profiles are Facebook's property, Google's properties. In the past days, it was Yahoo's property. But in this case, we believe it needs to be different. However, there is a challenge. If we don't want to hold it, it needs to be held somewhere else. So obviously, that, that is blockchain, easy, easy answer. But uh, there is another problem. If you go and do a uh, search on Google, you will actually see there are like three million answers, right? In our case, it is the same thing. If I look for an insight about something, I have touched 17 million people's opinion and 17 million people's profile. So if I really want to um, figure out the fair value of an opinion of, of two people, I have to update 17 million records. To give an example of it, let's say somebody like the past president of, of the US, Bill Clinton, 
makes a comment about politics, he expresses his, his opinion about politics, his opinion about politics will actually carry a lot more weight than mine. Because he has track records, he has you know, a lot of following when he talks about politics, so on and so forth, right? Versus I will probably have a lot more weight about talking about search and video than Bill Clinton would have. At least I think I can beat him on that. So what that means is it is to understand fair value of opinion, it also needs to touch the profile of who that where that opinion is coming from. So um, to calculate, when we calculate this fair use value of the opinion, and we are creating these profiles of the people, the challenge that we faced on using blockchain on this one is no blockchain could handle the volume that we are talking about. So um, that became a really interesting challenge for us, and we, um, we went back in, in how we had solved massive distributed peer-to-peer -peer networking in our past, and we'll tell you in a second where we come from. But the ch challenge was how do you make a stateless blockchain that is high-performing, uh, hyper-fast? To an example of that one will be, let's talk about what a state uh, uh, transactional state blockchain is. I will simplify it for you. So um, let's say Bitcoin and Ethereum is a, is, is a transactional state blockchain. What that means is if I gave you something, first somebody, I have to have that thing, right? Then I give it to you. So it means it needs to be in serially. It needs to happen serially. Like I cannot give you money without having the money and said I will arrive later. That will not work. So it's transactional. So I have to validate everything serially before the blocks are updated. Hence, the, the work that goes into transact, uh, uh, validating whether the transaction can happen is cumbersome, is complicated. Because now you have to, since the blockchains are, are, are created in a way that is non-trusting, you have to now figure out whether you really had it before you could give it to somebody else. What is a stateless um, uh, blockchain is, at the, at, in, at the core of it, a blockchain is nothing but a distributed, decentralized database with a ledger. That's it. There's nothing more to it. A stateless one, imagine there are data that's been generated bar from, let's say, IoT devices or different things. It's not a transaction. They're just generating a massive amount of data. It needs to be decentralized. It needs to be effective. But that is not in 10 transactions a second. That is in millions of transactions a second. So it is similar to how in, in again, the late 90s, people used a combination of cookies, HTTPS, to really solve the problem of client-server communication. So we faced a similar kind of challenge where we said, you know, we, we, we have created our own public chain, sorry, sorry, private chain that will soon be public, to have those profiles in a data blockchain. We are now tracking about 300,000 of those transactions per second, um, but these are different kind of um, transaction. These are stateless. This is all data driven. The idea of the idea of that is you use those profiles. And when we use people's opinion, you can give value back to those users. So every time people, whenever they have, uh, they were industry created on using the data that was derived from people's activities, consumers never participate in that mix, never. You never participated in, in all the wealth created by Google or Facebook or anybody. But I think that needs to change. This is, is particularly important when we're dealing with sensitive topics. Public policies. Like, opinion is not just about your products or your soap. It is about things that also matter significantly to us as a society. What do people think about Brexit? And why? 
what do think people think about topics like the US election and why? So those things, to really manage that, that carefully and keep the politically um, and inclined entities and persons in, in a very non-partisan way, we have to use a very secure, but yet transaction data-centric blockchain. So that's what we did. And the an idea of, of this is we have created by these three pieces, we have created the first opinion marketplace, where there are people that, that has opinion that have already expressed. We use technology to understand them, and they are seekers of those opinions that could be brands or businesses or public policymakers. So they understand human better. To give you, then sum it up, what we do is our, our, our product has three particular uh, things. The heart of our system is the video opinion index, where we are crawling like Google search. We're crawling the public uh, video. We don't care where the videos come from. We break those videos down into different sections, and we understand why people has that opinion. We put it in an index. We built a neural network on top of that that answers the questions why people has that opinion. That's the product that we sell. And we have used our own blockchain that can handle the scale that we are talking about. And the, it attributes value back to those users. We, um, I'm going to introduce Ourself. ourselves, what we, what we have done. Um, so you can put some ideas behind why some of these things may not be as difficult as it sounds. Uh, I was very fortunate to be in Yahoo from the very, very early days. Um, I was in late 96, and I'm, I'm mostly known in Yahoo for creating Yahoo Messenger. That at one point was the, the single largest uh, distributed peer-to-peer -peer network in the world. We had about a quarter of a billion people on it. Um, after that, I've created a series of companies. We um, I did a company called Rhythm New Media, which later we took the company public. I did a company called BuySight, where we did search-like uh, targeting for display ads. We got acquired by AOL. We now run what is known as AOL Performance Network. My co-founder, he, uh, he actually was in Yahoo before me. And um, his claim to fame is he created what is now known as Hadoop. Uh, later, he became the CEO of Yahoo in India. And then Amazon stole him to be the CEO of Amazon in India. And then Amazon created this group called A9, which built their entire fulfillment system from scratch. Uh, so Bharat was the CTO of A9. Uh, we, were, we are also very fortunate to have the entire top management of Google search as our board members, investors, advisors, so on and so forth. Amit Singhal wrote Google search. He took over from Sarji Brin, and uh, he rewrote uh, PageRank. Vinod Marur runs uh, Google AdWords. And uh, Krishna Bharat's claim to fame is he uh, created Google research, and so on and so forth. So our, um, with, with all those um, people who are helping us to understand is how to build the machine more efficiently, where it can answer questions like why you may think a certain ways, and leaves the clues in a way so we understand people better. That's our mission. That's the entertainment that we have for you. Um, We'll, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer your questions, or we are around here if you want us for anything. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. It's getting hot, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> any, any questions on Jarvis before? Let's leader leaves the stage. There's one. Maybe not. Question. One one quick question as we just transition to the to the panel because we probably need to keep the, the the pace up. And otherwise, there is meet the speakers downstairs, and Callum can 
uh, take you down there. So yeah, Patrick Martin Patrick. from European Media Finance. So uh, are you doing an ICO and uh, when can people invest? It's speaking to my mic. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we are. <laughs> We are uh, doing an ICO, and the idea of this, uh, our ICO is it's, it's happening in August. Um, and the idea of this one is, you know, we are in a stage where we are seeing tremendous demand from our customers. So we can um, address that in globally. Uh, so our I ICO's objective is that, so we can understand uh, people's opinion globally much faster, better. Google took seven years to reach a global uh, phase. We don't have the luxury anymore. We are going to get there in a much shorter period of time. So yeah, so we're doing an ICO in uh, in August. And when can people do that? The crowd sale is going to start in sometime in August. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rod at the front would like to ask a question. How can I deny Rod a, a question? Essentially, do you have a taxonomy of emotions? Absolutely. That's the, that's the core of it. That's our IP. Yeah. Tax, taxonomy is not about emotions. Taxonomy is about opinions. So for example, it is, it, it is about, about attributes and relevance. To give an example of it, that car example I used, the Aston Martin, the, a car, has attributes like the wheels, has the uh, speed, has the interior, all those things. And it has different weightage. For example, if you knew what people think very deeply about the wheels of the car, that does not mean that we understand what people think about the car. So there's a weightage in these attributes, and that's, that's our core IP. That's how we build the machine. So is the taxonomy open enough to be able to target associated content to video? Uh, it's, not, it's, it's not open as an API open to other, other companies now. We did not build it that way. It's built for our own, um, uh, our own neural network so it can measure the depth. But we get asked that question a lot. Um, and we have worked with some, uh, some of the very large companies to really understand specific things about opinions. So we can talk about that one later. Thank you, everybody. Two, two on course. Thank you. We're doing a press thank you.